So what I got here is a FLIR model infrared camera. And what the infrared camera basically does is it shows you differences in temperature in the form of uh, color. So the darker the color, the colder the temperature, and the lighter the color, the warmer the temperature. And what you can see right there across this window is a lot of cold air that's actually leaking in from the outside around the window trim. Um, there's two ways that you can handle that. You can either literally take the window trim off and then fill the gap between the window and the framing with an expandable foam or caulk, or you can just simply caulk the trim to the drywall. Um, caulking the trim to the drywall will reduce the air leakage in the house. It doesn't necessarily stop the air from getting around the window, but at least it's not coming into the house. It's an it's a easier, more cost-effective way to do this. So what I'm going to do is go through the house with the camera and find any places where there's air leaking in. I'm going to take an infrared picture and a standard picture, and then it'll go together in the report for Kelly, so she can easily tell what I'm looking at. So what we've noticed is that there's minimal duct leakage uh, in Kelly's supply and return vents in her house, but she does have vents that are in her outside walls. So if there's any air leakage from the duct system that gets into your wall cavity, the only way to really fix that would be to take the grill here off and then caulk or use silicone to seal the duct boot to the drywall or to the plaster. And that'll eliminate any extra duct leakage going into the wall cavity. Sometimes you'll see, you'll go to somebody's house and they'll see a little bit of dust around there. That's exactly what that is. It's, it's air leakage from the ductwork around the drywall itself. If, okay, I'm familiar with the spray foam products and things like that, so if we actually insulated those exterior walls, that would, or can you inject that to help that, or should you do another well, the, cost saving method? You can insulate the walls, but I mean, the walls are already insulated here. Correct. And to really fix that problem, there's a space between the window itself and the framing that needs to be filled with like an expandable foam or caulk. Okay. It probably just has fiberglass around the window right now, okay. and fiberglass doesn't stop air movement, so right. really the best way to do it would be to pull the trim off from around the window, okay. take out whatever's around the window itself, whether it's fiberglass or whatever, and then use a minimal expansion foam Got around it. the window and put the trim back. Okay. At a minimum, you could just caulk the trim to the wall, Correct. and that would keep a lot of that air from getting into the house. So it'll keep it out of here, but it won't keep the condensation off the window. Right. And I mean, there's st like still going to be cold around the trim itself or behind the trim. Right. But at least it's not getting into the house. Okay. So. Help, but not the problem fixing. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not the. Uh, it's not the best solution, but. Got it. It's a whole lot more cost effective. Yeah. So here it looks like along your the wall that goes down to the basement, you've got your staircase going downstairs, and it looks like part of the ceiling is open to the attic and those wall cavities are open to the attic above. Okay. You can't see it with uh, the naked eye, but right. the infrared camera shows it. Right. But now that only shows that wall or does it show the actual wall? Okay, so we just showed that. To yeah. the attic, okay, because there's a lot of air loss right there. Yeah, so you can see that oh, yeah. it's a lot darker up there. Oh, yeah. And as we go down to where it is, yeah. If you stand, If we stand back further, you can see that this whole line just goes at an angle along with the how it slopes down, so it's missing insulation or a lack of blocking up in the attic right now. Your bulkheads are definitely uninsulated. So this is something that I find a lot in, in older houses where they have the drop soffit or some people call it a soffit, some people call it a bulkhead, but basically that's a part of the um, ceiling and the wall that is open to the attic above. So the darker colors indicate that there's cold air from the attic that's circulating in that bulkhead. And what needs to happen is from the attic side, at the same height as the ceiling, the top of that bulkhead needs to be blocked off with something solid like drywall or foam board or something, and then seal that, that barrier to the framing so that it stops that problem. So the attic hatches are typically one of the leakiest places in the house. Um, you can see all the way around the trim how it fades out like that, that is, that is all that is is air leakage. So when it goes from a darker color to a, a lighter fade, that's literally air movement that you're looking at all the way around there. So what I recommend Kelly do is build up the attic hatch first of all so that you can get a full amount of insulation right up to the edge of the attic hatch, but then also caulk the trim to the ceiling 
and then put heel and stick weather stripping all along the perimeter so that when the attic hatch sits down on top of it, it's a nice snug airtight um, application. And the last thing that she should do is take uh, some foam board and glue it to the top of the attic hatch so that you actually have an insulated attic hatch. Because some people have two or three attic hatches in their house that are not insulated and that surface area adds up to a big hole of, of nothing in your ceiling. So it's a big wasted space. Check the attic up here, see what we got. Looks like uh, some older cellulose insulation and uh, it's actually blown on top of fiberglass. So I'd say there's a little bit less than an R19 up in the attic. It's probably somewhere between an R15 and an R19, something like that. So what I'm gonna recommend is that Kelly have all the holes in the, in the ceiling uh, sealed up with foam or caulk first, and then come in and blow in another probably six to eight inches of cellulose on top of that. So, but you have to air seal before you insulate. So this looks like a plumbing wall. They actually, you know, built the wall out so that they could put plumbing vent stacks behind here. And I would bet you $10 that there's a plumbing stack that goes through here up into the attic. And that's what you see with the infrared camera is just a big dark area on the wall. So where that plumbing vent penetrates the ceiling, we need to get into the attic and use uh, expandable foam or caulk and seal that opening to the ceiling so that you don't have the air leakage occurring. Same thing where the electrical line goes through the attic. Actually, this is a good indication right here. This is a good picture. Um, foundation walls actually have very little R value to them. Uh, eight to 10 inches of concrete only has an R value of about one. And to get a good idea of, of how poor that is, single pane glass windows have a higher R value than 10 inches of concrete. So it's one of the last places that people think about typically. But right here you can see the darker color is what is actually above grade outside and so it's the coldest surface area and then once you get to about two feet below grade the foundation wall starts warming up so once you're once you're two foot below grade the uh, the wall the temperature surface of the uh, ground is always 55 to 57 degrees so it's not as important to insulate lower than that but definitely the top two to four feet of your foundation wall should be done Joist here the rim joist is what sits on top of the foundation wall between floors and some people call it the band joist or the rim joist or whatever, but basically this area of your house is one of the leakiest areas in the house. And it's because you have all kinds of holes going through it. There's different building materials coming together and it's just hard to seal. It's hard to insulate. So what I recommend is using spray foam insulation to seal all the cracks and gaps and penetrations that go through the rim joist in one step. It'll air seal it and it'll insulate it. And you can also bring that spray foam down the foundation wall to seal the rim joist to the foundation wall itself. So Kelly's rim joist here is actually uninsulated. And for the Kentucky Home Performance Program, she will have to seal that rim joist and insulate it to at least an R13. So pretty easy thing to do, especially if she's going to be remodeling the, the basement. Um, so that'll definitely be on the recommendations list.